Hi, my name is Alan. I'm a Power Apps Champs and also I'm a Microsoft MVP. So today I'm going to walk you through uh, a solution on how to draw live uh, raffle tickets here yeah, using Power Apps, right? So today because of COVID-19, uh, a lot of the live event of uh, physical drawing that we used to do in terms of drawing raffle tickets, we can't perform it anymore physically to perform the live drawing across a, a Teams meeting and we want to do it um, in a very exciting way and, and a fun and lots of actions, right? So today you will see this uh, example. You'll be able to uh, come up with something like this, what I have on the screen right now. Alright, let's get started. We're going to start off from a blank canvas sheet, right? So since we already have in our mind how it's going to look like, that's how I always start in terms of uh, UX first. So uh, imagine I'm going to have the big start button on the right and then I have the numbers as shuffling on, on the left and I have the winner's name on the top. So this is already uh, been drawn inside my brain and now I'm going to start and putting them together. So the next step would be, so what I would do is uh, I will start off by building with the blank apps and I'm just going to give it a, a name, yeah, uh, raffle, draw, machine, okay, and then let's create it for blank. So first of all, I'm going to connect to the data, okay, in this case, it is a SharePoint, this I have a raffle items and a raffle tickets bring it in and there you go so we have the raffle tick items and tickets so I'm going to give you a quick view on what they are so in raffle tickets this is what I have pre uh, preloaded I have the 1000 or 2000 tickets number and I have a column called randomizer they help me randomize uh, the sequence I do not want to issue the tickets uh, in, in, in ascending order or in descending order I want it to be completely random and every time a ticket has been assigned the column assigned will be marked as yes yeah and so that this number will then be part of the draw right and we will exclude anything that is no and then the name of the person that the ticket was assigned to so these are all mock up uh, data Okay, let's start off by building that most important thing which is in, in the app, which is the button, the start button, right? So we're going to give it a big, uh, create a big button here, 350 by 350. Uh, and then because I want it round, so what I will do is I'll put the, the button radius to be the same size. So now I have a button. And from this button, I'm going to give it call it start, right? And I want this to be Lato. And then I want it to be large 44. Okay. And for the sake of this uh, demo, I'm going to make this as our apps color with no borders. Okay. Voila. So now we have a button that will literally strike uh, the list and then find the random number random rows from uh, the from the SharePoint list that has a, that with the numbers that are assigned we will not draw or consider numbers that are not so or not assigned right so we only look for uh, tickets that are so and with the status mark assigned equal to yes so but before we go into that uh, we go do some fun stuff here. We're gonna bring in the audio. Yeah, we want uh, whenever the button is hit, a audio is uh, is played. Yeah, to uh, to generate that suspense, right? To keep people interested in the in the in in the process. And uh, so hit the button, the audio play. Uh, and then we can bring in more stuff by bringing in some something to flash on the screen, right? So let's do one step at a time. Uh, 
So let's do the audio. Next, we're going to move on to the fun part whereby when somebody click on the start button, I want drum roll to start playing in the background, right? So that we can generate that excitement, that suspense in the in the in the environment, uh, in in the atmosphere for for the event. Uh, so to do that, what I would do is uh, go to the media section and upload a couple of audio files. In this case, uh, I have the drum roll and the lucky drop. I'll just bring in both first, yeah. So once you have uh, the the audio file in your app, uh, just bear in mind that you have uh, up to two hundred meg uh, to uh, of media files that you can upload to be included into your into your app. So uh, just for best practices, do not abuse it, right? Uh, for performance reason, you do not want your user to be waiting forever to to load the app, open the app because of some huge data file, huge audio file or media file that you have included. Okay, so to insert the uh, drum roll audio into your app, you just simply double click on it, it will show up on your app canvas. Or you can do insert media and then choose audio and then select the drum roll, right? So for me, I just, so for simplicity, I just double click and there you go, right? And what we want to do next is to uh, have the button trigger a, a, a flag that we can pass on to the audio, right? To this audio file. So in this case, I am going to say on select of this start button, I want the drum, uh, a variable called var drum roll, right? To become true. So, and then from here, I go to the media file of this drum roll and say it will start based on that trigger, yeah, which is wah drum roll. Okay, so with that, uh, uh, every time you hit the start button, that drum roll will become true. Yeah. So uh, what I would do is to again housekeeping purpose. I'm gonna say drum roll. And this is audio. Okay. Uh, and for for the sake of uh, troubleshooting, you can always put a label to show the value of drum roll, right? So call this uh, wah drum roll equal. So now, as you can see, the value of the of this variable is false because I haven't clicked on this start button yet, right? So let's give you a try. Yeah. So I'm gonna hit this button, and the uh, the audio should play. Voila! Yeah. Da -da -da. the winner right so now it's good so then as you can see as well the drum roll has turned the value from false to true yeah so it doesn't end there so we need to uh, reset this uh, we need to reset this variable every time this audio finishes playing right so what you need to do is go to the drum roll audio again and say on end yeah on end this time i'm going to set the drum roll to false okay do, do, do. okay so now you will see that uh, when it's end it will force so they will not play you can then continue on the next one so watch this this is false I click this, it should turn to true. And then when this start playing, a 10 second letter later, this will turn back to false. Watch it. There you go, it's true, right? And now as it's playing, and when it finishes, it turns to false. It's behaving as per what we want now, all right? So now we have the audio working. I'm just gonna put it in one pocket, one corner. 
and I will hide it because I do not need to see it. I'm going to make it the visible to false, right? So you can always set the visible to here, false. Or you can set it from the panel on the side. All right, so and this thing, this just for checking, I'm just going to park it one side, which I would use it for other thing later. Yeah. So now we, we have uh, the audio working, but there's one thing that I'm not sure if you notice. When I click on it, it turned into blue, right? Which I do not want it to be blue. I want it to be purple. So it is actually the, the, this, the Hoover color. So I want the Hoover color to be uh, not blue. I want it to be purple as well. So what you can do is uh, either change it uh, completely, yeah, to blue, to to purple, which is uh, the same color as this one. The uh, fill equal to your fill. So I will do equal to self fill, yeah. Hoover color, Hoover color. Who feel? I'm gonna make it feel. Okay. Now it's purple too. And also there's one more, which is it will become white right now because it's disabled. So which is uh, disabled when it is disabled, I want it to be purple as well. Yeah. Disable. Okay. I do not want it to be white. I want it to be filled as yes. purple. Okay. So let's try again. So it's now purple. All right. So we have we have the audio part of it done. So next is is I'm going to bring in something visual onto the screen. As the drum roll is being played, I want something to flash on the screen. Uh, so so that we can create a suspense, right? So to do it, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create an, a, a circular shape, right? That is uh, sitting behind the uh, start button, and this circular shape uh, will play around with the transparency of the of the uh, object, right? Of this circular shape, and using the transparency to give you that flashing effect, right? Uh, and transparency is the alpha, right? The alpha of the field. So. Uh, if you think of it along this line, what you mean, or what I mean is that you need to find a way to make the alpha value keep changing, yeah, while the music is playing. So we know we have a drum roll trigger. So now you need another trigger, which is uh, will we'll set the value that's changing all the time. So in this time, when it's changing all the time, you use a timer, right? So we're going to insert a timer, okay? And this timer, uh, I'm just going to call it. Uh, normal timer this is called the uh, we call it the timer okay for drum roll uh, flashes flash yeah drum roll flash okay so I'm just gonna call it that way and uh, if you look at the the duration is by default is one minute which is a bit too long so I'm just gonna give it one second okay so every second it will keep repeating. I just need something to run right, to to roll the number. Okay. So and then I want this timer to start every time the uh, the drum roll is starting, right? So I'm gonna same thing using the same trigger while drum roll, right? So that whenever you hit the button start, the drum roll uh, flag become true, and the timer start, right? And the timer will start and run for one second and then as long as the drum roll is still true it will continue to run yeah that's the whole idea so next is to create the uh, circular shape right so i'm going to put in a circular shape two, 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 circular okay and this one doesn't need to be a button because i do not want it to be uh, pressed okay so since that one was 350, this one I'm going to give it to 400, 400, yeah. And see whether it fits behind, yeah, it fits okay, I think, yeah. And I'm going to put it at the back. Okay. So now I have a, a ring behind this uh, button, yeah. 
and this ring uh, I am going to give it the same color as the purple yeah uh, except that this time the the ring so I'm gonna call it something else yeah I'm gonna call it the flashing uh, ring okay. okay and for this one what we need to do is to play around with this uh, uh, alpha number right okay so this alpha number so this alpha number is anything between 0 to 1 right while our timer is 0 to 1000 yeah so what you need to do is to convert that timer value into uh, uh, this range of 0 to 1 but at the same time you want to have some sort of a safeguard because you do not want it to be completely transparent all the time and it's not viewable so what I would do is uh, I would take the timer value right say timer let's try it first right so we get a, the timer value and uh, take the value okay and I say uh, since this is always from zero to a thousand I do not want it to be too transparent I want to say minimum 300.3 uh, so I'm going to put it at 300 there Okay, because I do not want it to be completely transparent so and then from there once I have uh, this value I know that I need to bring it down uh, this value to between uh, 0 and 1 so what I would do is uh, this is going to give me anything between 300 to a thousand right so if I divide by a thousand it will give me 0.321 right so what I need to do is to take this whole thing and divide by a thousand by a thousand okay. okay and that's it right so now I have a half transparent ring there so let's give it a shot let's see how it goes ready Uh -huh. there's an issue here that the ring didn't flash after every second the reason is uh, the timer was not set to repeat right so what we need to do is go choose the timer uh, there you go it's not set to repeat so we, we want it to repeat itself all the time right so we try again voila it's working right okay so now we have uh, the transparency, the, the alpha level uh, toggling, uh, gradually going up from 0.3 to, uh, to 1 and then back to 0.3 to 1 again, right? So this is uh, one way that you can do to make it uh, uh, flashing, right? So with, with, with a bit of stuff, okay? So now that this part is also done, what I'm going to do is this timer is good to go so I'm gonna hide it so we have some space to focus on other things okay done